Look, that blue stuff or that green stuff is your termite. Personally, I'll tell you, every termite company in the world hates dye. It gets everywhere. If you have a sprayer failure, if you have a leak, even a small one, that dye can get anywhere. But it can be used. Oh, and also if you use dye, it takes about five times of rinse out your sprayer where you can't even see it. So there's a lot of cleanup with it. When to call in a wood treatment? During the drying stage of framing, before your installation, you gotta let the product dry. It takes about 30 minutes. Um, we can use the dyes, and we also do it. There's another application of something called pest tubes, which you would do at the same time. Uh, that's a product uh, that's kind of new to Louisiana uh, the last few years. Borate is not a standalone. You have to do that perimeter treatment that I've stated with it. And with your borate, you're gonna get 30 plus years efficacy out of that product enclosed. And that product is also labeled for wood floors. Oh, excuse me, you're, that product is labeled for, uh, I just saw that right there, but the product is labeled for wood rot. It's labeled for uh, carpenter ants and powder post beetles. So I have a con right here, wood floors. So if you're building a house, renovating a house, you have a nice wood floor, and you turns out that you only treated the structure two feet up, you have no protection for that wood floor. You got an outlet coming up that wood floor. If you didn't pre-treat it, they come up, they damage the wood floor. And they may only damage 20 square feet of that wood floor, but if it's 200 square feet, your floor guy's gonna tell you, I can't match that. And then the people are, oh, if he can't match it, you owe me a whole new wood floor. Then it's this whole thing. Me saying, oh, well, he better match it because I'm only paying you $2,000 for the damage. I'm not replacing your whole wood floor. And then it, it becomes this really complicated type of claim. So the answer to wood floors is it's always good to at least pre-treat your pipes. Because if you do only a borate and a wraparound treatment, you're leaving your wood floors a little bit more susceptible, especially at cracks in the slab, outlets, you know, to get damaged. It's really expensive to replace these wood floors. That's a really big hindrance, uh, you know, on the people's lives. So, last more than 30 years, sometimes you could do more than one coat as well if you really want a little bit more. Most of the time, it's just one coat. Benefits of borates, a lot more convenient scheduling. You're paying just a little bit more money. It's longer lasting. You have no weather delays. It's lead approved if anyone builds like a green lead type of home. And then I would say your wood floors and your posts and columns on porches, those are areas that they come up that uh, porch and if you don't do your perimeter treatment in the end, they'll come right up that column, eat up the column. And if it's a treated column, they'll still travel all the way up it, even if it's treated, and they're gonna eat that header. And by the time you know you got a problem, you're already ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 deep in damage. New construction termite baiting, we already passed that around. That's the Centricon system. This is another system right here. And then we also have what's called an AG box. So uh, pretty cool technology that came out a few years ago. If you have an active infestation in the house, you get this AG box. And it's the same active ingredient in Centricon. You pour water or Gatorade in there. You knead it up a little bit like dough. You cut a couple slits in there and you install it on the wall or the side of the slab. And they eat that bait. You go back after 30 days, you show the customer, look, they're eating the bait. It's working where with your liquid products, what are we doing? We're spraying a hole in the wall, saying this is gonna work, or we're foaming a hole in the wall, and you say, well, I hope we got them if we don't open this up. I just hope we got them. But with that, you can monitor their eating and their feeding and physically show a customer and give them that peace of mind that their termites are dying. So baiting is uh, even more so than the boreal, it's the safest application and it offers the longest warranty once they move in, as long as they keep renewing their protection. Baits work 24 seven. Termites are looking, feeding all the time. They're foraging all the time. They're gonna find the bait, they're gonna feed on it, they bring it back to the queen, the soldiers, the reproductives, they all eat it and they're all gonna die. So 
new construction termite baiting in order to be classified as new construction with the premier warranty you have to install it within one year of construction uh finished to be quite you know and you're offering a damage warranty by the pest control company people really like that because it's green it's tangible they know what it is when they walk around when they mow they know the condition of that whereas your liquids if you're pouring a pool and you mess up your grade against your structure and we had a liquid up against there, no one's thinking about termite control. But in reality, they're voiding their warranty and two years later, if they get termites, then it's on them. And it's you know a hard conversation. So they know when you pull up that station, we pulled up some stations, we gotta have them redone. And you know, they're a lot more constantly aware of it. The cons of Centricon, it must be maintained to be very, very effective and um, if the homeowner doesn't renew it, we're required by law to re remove the stations. So you can't go out and spray a house and then six months later if they say, I'm canceling, say, okay, I'm taking up the dirt. You know, you can't say that, but that is the law with this system, but it's very highly effective and the science behind it is proven over the last 25 years to be very, very effective. So this is a good question. Uh, I get asked this all the time kind of similar to maybe like a car mechanic or you know whoever but uh, and I want to get y'all's input on this why does pricing from company vary vary so much what do y'all think it was up there in case y'all read it let's just get a couple answers size of the company anything else why does the termite pricing vary so much well, you said it earlier, they can uh, put a cheaper product in and the average person don't even know it. Cheaper product, you not knowing the product, you not being educated on the product. And also, um, the success afterwards, where, you know, if you really deal with most companies, you're going to say, oh, well, it's all pretty much below $500 on average per house between any company. But maybe company A can have a cheaper price because of that long-term relationship because they're calling that homeowner, they're upselling pest control, they're upselling mosquito, and they know that the lifetime value of that customer is really, really good on a custom house or any house. So those are things that you need to consider in that relationship with you as a builder with your termite company. If you're getting that contract signed and getting that information, you're probably going to have a lower price and it's bad for me to say that out loud but that relationship you have of saying you want to use company a i use them you got your termite warranty with them you should consider them for pest control and mosquito or if you have a rodent issue in the future they're great people if you're over there saying that stuff then that helps that company out a lot as long and that's why you want to be really comfortable with the company that you're using as well. So there's a long-term value when it comes to these customers, when, every, when you talk and it's part of many companies' business plan. That's why you only see maybe about, I would say less than six or less big termite pre-treat companies in the whole state. It's a part of those companies' business plan and we understand that long-term value and those other people, they're gonna say, I need to make you know, X amount of large profit on this job for it to be worth it to me, but they may not have a program to really continue on with these customers. Here's another add-on. We go there afterwards and we'll put out this 30-year uh, caulk. Uh, this is a termite caulk around the pipes to seal up these joints. And then we have something uh, called Termi Mesh. So uh, this will last pretty much forever. It's a military grade stainless steel mesh that can't chew through that. It's very sharp. One of y'all probably prick yourselves. But um, that's what we have. So if you want to uh, pass that around, you attach that to the collar of the pipe. And, you know, on average, it may be $35 to $50 a pipe, but it's a product that lasts forever. It keys into the slab, as you can see right here. So right before your slab is poured, even after the pre-treat, you put that in there, the slab keys into it, and it eliminates that avenue of that joint. And then we have particle barriers, which termites can actually, there's now research, they can travel on top of the particle barrier, but they cannot travel through this particle barrier.
add-on treatments. This is a this is a borate uh, boric acid, if you will, treated foam insulation for a crawl space. So we do this as well, and we'll actually use that borate product underneath, and we'll treat all the underneath of a crawl space. The conclusion add-on treatments. Uh, are you setting up the home? Yeah, 50 bucks, yeah, better be good, right? Uh, so, uh, are you setting up the home for long-term success? So I'm gonna see where we're at on time right now. We got, what, about 20 minutes-ish left? 3.53. Okay, so I think we start at 3.15-ish. Does that sound right? Okay. Gonna go into a few construction nightmares and setting the home up for long-term success, if you will. So, one thing that you wanna see, this is a termite tube right here, and this grade on this brand new house, you have a sprinkler system right here, and you can't see the slab. Now, any new home, you're gonna to wanna to see the slab at least three inches, that, that's what I say, and so you can inspect that slab for termites properly, and be sure if you have a big rain that your water level isn't getting up against your slab and sitting at your grade or above your grade where it's seeping in causing a moisture problem going into your weep holes or your vinyl siding or seeping through the brick you know you, you don't y'all all get it y'all understand what i'm talking about as a builder so be sure you can see your slab that goes into termite control and every termite contract approved by the department of ag says if you have dirt above grade, it voids the damage portion on the contract. So being sure to check behind your landscaper that he's not caking up that uh, landscaping and that mulch, you know, four or five inches of, on your brick. That stuff matters and it may void, you know, a termite warranty and more likely even create a moisture issue inside of that home. You see it right here. So we can't see the slab. This is just mulch going, you know, fairly new house. That's what you want to see. When we go around, if my inspector misses that, I'm going to go out there and say, Mrs. Smith, I'm so sorry. This is pretty obvious. We can see six inches of your slab. They're going into the bottom plate and we're going to fix all this. You know, that's what you want to hear if that situation exists. We also, uh, I want to give you all, this is a, you know, kind of a sore subject. Y'all can pass this around. This is a termite carton nest, only really about five to 10% of a termite carton nest, where you had spray foam insulation on one side and the carton nest was built out in the back. I have a lot back there in our showcase. And so termites can easily create a nest out of spray foam insulation. The spray foam insulation, if it's not installed or if the breathing of the home isn't right, this is one of the biggest things, even on a national level, that are big, is a big subject concerning spray foam insulation. So yeah, it's pretty, it's kind of dirty. You know, it's mud, they bring up mud and they create their nest out of it. So you would have never seen that nest, even if you opened up the wall, you would have just saw a couple pinholes with mud coming out of, out of the edge and there's spray foam in the whole wall. There was moisture trapped from a leak in that instance. And when I tell you that's five to 10%, I mean, it's, a, it's as wide or big as you know, some of these tables that you're pulling these nests out with literally hundreds of thousands of termites if it's active. And how are you supposed to tell the homeowner we got them all? It's a lot of work to remove all that spray foam insulation and then see what the damage is. And you can't treat them unless you really remove it. That AG box, it'll only work pretty well with that bait that foam, you're not gonna get the distribution of your foam, you're not gonna get the distribution of your liquid unless you take that stuff out. So really difficult, there's a ton of articles on this. So uh, does anyone in here use spray foam insulation? Yeah, and so yeah, the, I'm telling you, I can tell you three companies, you know, uh, and including myself, national companies, regional companies, they've all got rid of their warranties for any home concerning spray from insulation because of the issues concerning it. And on a national level, you know, the Pest Control Association is working with the Home Builders Association, you know, about these types of issues and how it's applied and how it's installed, whether it's open cell versus closed cell or attic versus wall, 
you know, all these types of things. It's, it's a really big subject. There could be a whole class just on this, so I'm not going to get super into it.